I've already said many times how I think DeSantis is quite worrisome if he were to win the Republican primaries. I mean, besides him likely cutting Medicare, Social Security, a safety net, any leftist programs to help the disadvantaged, he most definitely wants big government when it comes to morality and Christian values. Out of any of the Republican candidates who have a chance, he is the one who would be the most likely to really push for Christian nationalism. We can see this with so many of the things he's enacted in Florida. Granted, there are a few things that he's done that I agree with, but that doesn't make up for all the rest of the things that I don't agree with. Both Ron DeSantis and Greg Gutfeld's recent statements about Florida's public school curriculum regarding slavery are honestly some of the most disgusting things that I've heard from public figures in a long time. I mean, they're basically saying, especially Gutfeld, was saying, oh, well, you know, slavery was really bad, but at least they acquired some skills that they wouldn't have gotten if they wouldn't have been slaves. Gutfeld even elaborated further when he was pushed by another commentator and said that people that were in concentration camps in the Holocaust gained some skills as well. There is no reasonable reason to put a positive spin on those kinds of historical atrocities. I mean, yeah, you might have a reason, but it's not going to be a reasonable reason. It's like, look, women didn't really have it that bad in the past. Who cares if they were somewhat looked at as property and that they have no agency? Look at all the positives. A strong family unit. Cohesive and understandable roles. As if people could never possibly choose those roles and values willingly. Or teach those values to others. Nope, nope, it's this notion that they must be mandated. Now, thankfully, I haven't heard popular pundits, except for maybe people like Matt Walsh and Michael Knowles, suggest or hint that we should move in that direction, you know, when it comes to women and families. But I have been seeing those kinds of narratives growing, especially if you go to uh, right-tilting sites. Especially if you go to, you know, the way that X is now, you know, X, formerly known as Twitter. I can't deny how popular conservative thought has gotten on Twitter, on X. I mean, I know that it was overwhelmingly on the left before Elon took it over, but I'm kind of thinking that it's starting to become overwhelmingly on the right now, as far as what gets seen, as far as the For You tab and such. Maybe that's my own fault, right? But I can't deny how conservative things have been going on X. So, But, you know, that was such a stupid move as far as Elon Musk changing the name and everything over to X. You kidding me? You should have waited a little longer before, I mean, at least get Twitter in a usable, decent, solid form before you make this sort of change. Anyway, back to the actual subject at hand. DeSantis worries me a lot. The fact that DeSantis wants public schools to push that there was a silver lining to slavery really doesn't make him look very good. Now, thankfully, his popularity is dwindling, like a 40% loss. That makes me hopeful. And this is before the latest bigoted pseudo-campaign video surfaced that got shared by a DeSantis staffer and then was the tweet was deleted shortly after, and that staffer was fired as well. You know, that video that has Nazi symbols, or symbols that Nazis have used, in the background, near the end of the video. Yeah, this is before that video was brought to the public's attention. I say pseudo-campaign video because it seems more like something to hurt DeSantis more than it's really going to help him. Unless you're an extremist on that side, and perhaps that would look good. But it <laughs> nobody knows who made the video. But I'm glad it was made. If Trump goes to prison, which is entirely possible, it'd be nice to know that DeSantis isn't going to be president. Just saying. 